Now, Chris, we saw Alex Pramar fall out of the car, completely dehydrated. If we're sitting here too, many, too much longer, I'm gonna need an IV drip. How are you holding up, you all right? I'm grilling here in summer. Yeah. It's warm, it's unseasonably warm, but yeah. um, that's okay. I just wanna ask you because we've talked earlier about uh, the overachievers. What about the underachievers? I've got my list. Let's uh, hit me up with yours first. Mine's a bit of a negative positive because in the first half of the year, at least up to Phillip Island in May, Team Vodafone were underachieving. The fact that they'd only scored two race wins in that time frame was reflected by the effort they put into making the second half of the year so good. And it takes a lot to turn the ship around. So over a season, absolutely, they achieved brilliantly. But at the start of the year, I think they were caught by surprise with FPR. A couple of others that obviously come to mind, uh, you know, Walkinshaw Group, are they really looking to finish in the lower part of the top 10 in the early teens? You'd have to say no, based on yeah. the resources they've got at their disposal. And, you know, the Kellys, despite the fact that they're gearing up for the future, it's like they really didn't have any reason to care about the now. And, uh, and they just struggled through with a lot, lot of dramas mechanically and, and just the whole persona of the team, they're in limp mode. Yeah, yeah, and look, I know it's gonna sound boring, but I agree with you 100% on all of those. If I had a dollar for every time someone asked me, what's going wrong at Walkingshaw Racing? Why aren't HRT winning races? And look, it's a rebuilding process and I'm, I'm not gonna defend them because I do have a bit of a link there clearly with Enduros, but I think, uh, Russell ha has done a pretty good job, really. You know, he went into a new team. I didn't expect Russell to be in the top five or even the top ten in the championship in that uh, early phase. But when you look at uh, QR and Eastern Creek, he was probably the one that started to get results before, you know, James and Garth. But clearly, the Holden Racing team do not want to finish at the back end of the top ten. Uh, and for me, Cali Racing, an absolute shocker of a year. You know, I, I really like Todd and Rick, but I mean. It is a transition year, but what did you, you know? When you look, they've also got commercial arrangements there with Jack Daniels, and uh, they were absolutely nowhere all year. I think Rick, his tenacity behind the wheel, he jagged the car, you know, dragged it up at Homebush to finish off the year, and had a couple of reasonable qualifying results. But on the whole, I think they were really ordinary when you compare to the rest of the field and the resources that they still have. Yeah, a fair bit of turmoil from a personnel perspective as well. A lot of people have been moving through that team and not been able to keep a lot of people. Uh, the whole Tony Dow thing, here one day, gone the next sort yeah. of thing. And I think that there's some unrest in that camp and a couple others didn't have great years. You know, Dick Johnson Racing, they don't want to be running down, you know, well down in the teens and uh, in the lower twenties. Lots of change to come about for them as well. And look, even Gary Rogers Motorsport, to be fair, you know, they would have expected Michael Crusoe to be further up inside the top 10 because he's done it before. It's interesting there because once he made the announcement that he was moving, he seemed to drop off a little bit. And I think that's what happens. A driver gets distracted. They're starting to think about next year. Uh, DJR, I'm really surprised about Stevie. You know, I think uh, Dean Fiore, about where I thought he would be. But when you look at Moffat, he really showed him up in the second half of the year. So can Steve Johnson juggle a senior sort of management role and drive? I don't know. I think he needs to really look at 2013 as a rebuild and step back up for him. Uh, I think everybody along uh, the pit lane here at the moment would say the same thing regardless of what colour. If you weren't in a Team Vodafone or a, uh, an FPR car it was very very hard this year and, and you know, I speak frequently as you do to all the drivers and they're all marking themselves very hard so we're not being harsh when we say that they underperformed um, uh, but is it a question of them underperforming or the other guys overperforming and just what those ratios look like is a bit of a hard one, isn't it? Because one thing's for sure, all 28 of them are trying very hard. And, and you know, the truth is when you look at the time margins between these guys at many of the circuits, including our, our longest track, you know, 6,200 metres at Bathurst, we're talking about, I think it was half a second on the Friday in qualifying over the top 10. You know, if you're 10th, you would feel like an underperformer, but I can assure you from a competitor's standpoint, half a second away, it's an eye blink. So in my book, they're all, they're all superheroes.